Okay, I'm, I'm uh, very pleased to have this uh, hour or so to, uh, to talk to you about our, our coffee business, of uh, what we consider still one of, if not the most exciting opportunity in the food industry today, and, and of course something that is very, very dear to the heart of, of Nestle, uh, uh, the, the coffee business. So what, what I want to do uh, uh, with you is to, to show you a bit the, the landscape of, of the coffee business today and how much it has changed and, and the challenges that, uh, and the opportunity that is in there. Then we will talk about this Nescafe brand and what we're doing, the strategy going forward to stay relevant like we have for 77 years to our, our consumer. And then I will talk uh, uh, on, on portion coffee and cover uh, in that section also uh, our Nespresso business as well as Nescafe Dolce Gusto. So let, let me start with, uh, with the coffee opportunity. Why, why is it an exciting opportunity? Because the time of not so long ago to enter a coffee shop and ask for a coffee is gone. And today you have varieties of product and it's more and more the menus in coffee shops and everywhere are looking like a wine list of things. And that of course creates ability to be creative, to do new things and to premiumize a, a, a product. New coffee experience, you see, and you, for those of you who live in the US, there is not a month or two and then without a, a new coffee being reinvented, and sometimes old filter coffee being reinvented, re, re theatralized to make it relevant to the younger generation. Of course, very close to us is the fact that this coffee experience is now available very much in home thanks to coffee system, which uh, which we have pioneers. And last but not least, if you look at this, we still have three billion consumers who hardly have one cup of coffee a, a, a month in, the, in their life. So still a huge opportunity in the, in the emerging world. This is the market, this is the retail market, about 95 billion Swiss franc market, growing at about 5%. Uh, and this is led, of course, by portion coffee, uh, by that I mean the, the, the capsule coffee and all the, the single uh, serve coffee uh, and soluble coffee that continue to grow at 5% and of course I, I will cover that. Going forward we see about the same growth, a bit, a bit slower but this is inflation uh, uh, neutral and, and a big part of the growth and I will come back to that coming from five market, the US where, as you know, we are we historically not a, a, a strong Brazil, and you heard Laurent talk about that, and I will talk more about this. China, Russia, two countries where, where, where Nestle is very strong. And then the, the rest of, of the growth in AOA, MNA, where, where we are well positioned to, to take advantage of this. We are still, and this is uh, done especially when we talk about Starbucks with, um, how would I call that, with uh, some... Uh, um, we, we, we have, this is our best estimate of what Starbucks sell as a, as, a, as a coffee company. And it's very difficult to get, so this is with all disclaimer, sorry, <laughs> possible. But we are still believing strongly that we are the leading coffee company in the world. And we put Starbucks there because we consider them as, as being part of the competitive landscape this new one which goes from coffee shop from your home in the morning, breakfast in the morning, all the way to the evening, but also grabbing a cup of coffee on your way to work or at work, etc. And of course the third one is the creation, and this is of course the change in the landscape of coffee, of the creation of, of Jab, with uh, <coughs> the aggregation of uh, several coffee brands, some coffee chain, and uh, more recently of course the acquisition of, of uh, Keurig. And after that you, you recognize quite a few uh, uh, other, other brands which are uh, uh, much, much uh, uh, smaller in there. If I look at Jab, uh, we, which we see coming as a, always as a very, very strong competitor with a very well managed company, uh, uh, but, but also with its own uh, uh, strengths and weaknesses. And I tried here to just show you a face off of what, uh, how, how we see it and what uh, we will face. A good competitor is always good to have because we need, we have seen these 3 billion consumer that we have to, to convince to drink coffee and I think with Starbucks and Jab we can help to create and continue to grow these categories uh, at the space it has grown uh, the last few years. But Jab is a, a collection of a lot of brands, of course it's a result of uh, what they have done of acquisition and aggregation of, of uh, companies. Uh, we will face them with two brands, with two mega brands, uh, Nescafe and, and Nespresso. 
And if you look in, in categories and, and footprint, uh, we will face them off on soluble coffee, where our, our market share is, is uh, about double their market share. We are not present in Rust and Ground. We are present in Rust and Ground only in a few countries where we are the leaders, in Portugal, <coughs> in Spain, in the Nordic markets. And of course, in the portion coffee, they are larger than us with the acquisition of Keurig, and, and I will come back to that. But this is where one, uh, one big battle will take place, hopefully a battle on quality, a battle in, on, on innovation and <coughs> delighting consumer. They do 75% of their sales in Western Europe and in, in the US. Uh, we do far more of our sales in, in emerging market, as I show you here. If you look geographically and if you look at portion coffee and soluble coffee alone, you have in red where we are the, the leaders, and, and uh, I don't want to comment too much on this, but of course, and I will come back to this, the North American uh, uh, gap that we have had for, for quite some time. So to be big, to be strong is one thing, but to have a brand that is vibrant, that is alive, that is going uh, a delighting consumer, and the new consumer is what we, we really, really want. The soluble coffee, as I said, is growing still at 6%. And the, pre the, the, the growth is coming mostly from premium products. You have premium pure product on the top, but also premium what we call mixes, if you have uh, tried some of these products, cappuccinos and so, which are growing all over the world, and mainstream three-in-one coffee. This is what also explained the slowdown in PPP. In a lot of emerging markets, coffee uh, was sold in sachet at, at a low price as the first coffee cup you have today in a lot of emerging market, we are premiumizing we offer because our consumer is asking us for a more premium coffee varieties, premium blend, and this is what we are doing. What is Nescafe? I said before, we might be or we believe we are the leading coffee company in the world. What I'm sure we have is the highest penetrated brand in the world. Today in the world, 6,000 cups of Nescafe are drunk a second. A second. The average price of a Nescafe worldwide is a few cents. So you can talk about capabilities to premiumize, and you can compare that with a, with a Starbucks to see that in pure share of throat, of course, we are, we are far more penetrated than uh, any other brand. Present 170 countries, a market share insoluble of 44%. We are number one coffee system with Nescafe Dolce Gusto retail system. And we say retail system because Nespresso, of course, is, is sold through its own uh, uh, retailing system. And Nescafe today is the third most valued beverage brand in the world. Uh, all of this is, is uh, fine, but this is the past. And big doesn't mean you're fast. Big doesn't mean you're agile. Big doesn't mean you're going to be relevant to the consumer of the future. About 18 months ago, we embarked on a refreshment, rejuvenation of the Nescafe brand, and this was called for because we had new technology coming up, and I will talk about it, and you saw maybe some of the product in pure coffee with the, the technology that Stefan talked about, but also in cappuccino technology with a technology called Snow. And we believe with this big innovation we had, we had also to refresh the brand and bring it up to date to what our new consumer uh, was expecting. So I'm going to show you three dimensions, three films of how the Nescafe brand over the last 18 months has evolved uh, uh, in the world. So I go first, this works, yes. Two hundred red icons, a replica of Nescafe's new iconic accent, appeared on the streets of the main cities with an inspiring quote. At 9pm on Sunday, May 4th, 
every major network on both free and paid TV, stopped the programming to broadcast Nescafe's new ad. Hoy me di cuenta que no solo basta con despertar. Digital conversation immediately followed, and we took over the digital airspace to boost it even further. Africa is the youngest continent in the world. We set out to inspire young African entrepreneurs to generate innovative ideas that create shared value for Africa. We reached out to dreamers from across the continent, inviting them to send in their dreams. We also drove across the continent, sharing the inspiring power of Nescafe. We showcased exciting highlights from each of the truck stops. Our finalists participated in a Google Hangout and defended their ideas to a jury of successful entrepreneurs. Our final winner was overwhelmed by her victory. Her idea tackles starvation by reducing waste in the food supply chain. She received $30,000 worth of financial and mentoring support. So a relaunch of Nescafe that has gone worldwide in about eight, uh, 67 countries over the last 18 months. Linked to that, uh, uh, and the second new big uh, uh, endeavor we have I is to create, we, we know that uh, part of the coffee culture is coming from coffee shop. And there is no way we can compete with uh, the, the deployment of some of our competitors. But we have decided that in, in major cities we will open one flagship Nescafe and amplify it through social media and activities and, and so and we have started to do this and I will show you some footage of opening in Japan and in Korea which was followed with Mexico and the idea here is to create this imagery but then to execute also uh, uh, not as coffee shop in the street but to execute at universities to execute at, at point where, where uh, uh, younger people are, are meeting for example in China we have about 300 universities with coffee shop. Uh, the university on premise is a Nescafe coffee. So I show you this footage of launch Japan and Korea. How wonderful works we have done uh, together with the local marketing team and SBU to completely change the image of the Nescafe here. You know, I think this is the one of the very good examples how we can proceed the next 50 or 100 years of the Nescafe. Global. Well, it's only eight months in, uh, in Korea and I can tell you that uh, things are moving extremely fast in Korea. But we had fantastic support from the center in terms of designing the cafe, in terms of getting the financials to make it happen and uh, being able to be so visible in a vibrant place like Itaewon is a fantastic way to connect with consumers. third pillar, the integration of all the work we have done uh, with uh, the, the Nescafe plan. The Nescafe plan started uh, six years ago to, to provide farmers in, in uh, coffee countries with support in farming, in getting better yield, in also giving them plantlets that were adapted to, to the condition, the, the, the um, conditions of, of the, the places they were. This is the part that you will see in several countries being rolled now in mainstream media. It was a lot in social media. 
but I show you a film there that is going to be uh, rolled out in, in quite a few European countries that started already in France. And this is, again, to answer the question from our consumers, say, a brand, what is behind the brand, the social uh, engagement of that brand, what do you do to bring this coffee to us? And I show you the, this plan. Many of the world's coffee trees are old and need to be replaced. That's why Nescafe has developed the world's most ambitious sustainability plan in the coffee industry. I love my coffee plants. It's like, like raising a child. Yeah. Like I like love, I mean, I feel sometimes I feel like my plants, they know me yeah. and I know my plants. And I really can feel when I'm here, it's like, it's like, like, like a child. You know, whenever you get home, they are happy, they get happy. Yeah. Everything is just love. These are the baby plants. Yeah. Producing coffee, they last probably 10 years. Then I have to replant it. You're gonna have real nice, good and healthy coffee beans two years later. So this is a, a very important part today of communication of, of a brand and we have such an uh, extraordinary presence and, and continuous sustained presence in, in this coffee feed and helping farmers that uh, we're going to use it, to, not to use it, but to leverage it and to, to make it known that uh, the, this brand is, is responsible beyond just offering a great cup of, of coffee. The, the fourth part, of course, of this relaunch was to, to communicate to millennials, to be closer to them. And there we'll talk, I will show you some uh, communication to, to millennials, uh, but, but also some new coffee, and uh, we'll uh, talk about that, and some, some innovation. And this is all in the space of two years, what we have done. So I show you a few communication. These are social media communication. Two of them have won awards uh, in, in Cannes, and, and I let you just judge. Ciao. Ciao. Per me sei forte. Wow. Yes, grazie. Molto gentile. Ciao. Ciao. Salut, moi c'est Arnaud. Vous vous êtes déjà demandé si vos amis Facebook étaient vraiment vos amis Pour avoir la réponse, j'ai accepté de faire l'expérience moi-même avec mes vrais contacts. Alors je vais prendre un café avec eux. Comme ça, à l'improviste. C'est quoi le délire C'est un gag Attends Et on s'est pas vu depuis 20 ans. L'école maternelle. Mais moi je te vois plus comme un gamin. Ah bon Life is full of possibilities. Possibilities to explore every situation. To open yourself up to new encounters. Even if the path ahead is sometimes blurry. You know that the only way to go is not to stand still. And when you look for inspiration, you will find it staring at you. Every day, a new journey of discovery is about to start. It all starts with a Nescafe. Ik अगलाते हुए कमेडियन की सबसे बड़ी स्ट्रेंथ होती है सस्पेंस हर हर ऑडियंस आपकी तरफ पेशेंट नहीं होती मैं अटकता हूं वो खिसक लेते हैं तो मैंने दोस्तों को समझाया टाइम लगता है यार बफरिंग में थैंक गॉड फॉर कॉफी इसने मुझे लगाए रखा और आपको जगाए रखा माई नेम इज ऋषि
So last 18 months of, of going through what we have labeled the red revolution because we brought the red color back to Nespresso, no, to Nescafe, so you, you saw what uh, we did. And, and I said this is also based on new product and, and new technologies. So let me show you a few of these new products also because this morning we talked about non-dairy uh, product. But these are a few products that we are launching or have launched uh, uh, to, to address uh, the, the millennial opportunities. Uh, the second one, the Nescafe Dolce Gusto, is also a technology breakthrough. This is a soya, soya milk-based uh, cappuccino, and this goes uh, after the opportunity that was raised this morning of, of people wanting non-dairy non uh, product. Azera is a portable product, and the last one, maybe you tested it in, uh, in uh, this morning on the sixth floor, is a liquid concentrate that allows you to do cold coffee. And cold coffee I is important, and this is also a, a very big uh, drive that uh, that the Nestle Group is uh, is embarking on, especially in uh, in in Asia, where we have been there for for a while. Uh, why? Because today, uh, children below below 20 years old uh, drink 40 percent of their coffee cold, so they enter the coffee world mostly via the the, the cold options, and we need to be there. And this is very very much so. In, in Asia. And you see there our, our strengths where we are leading in, in China, in the ASEAN, in Turkey. We are number one in China in, uh, in home, in bringing home. We are not in, in out of home product. I put there Greece because for some of you may know, uh, to, to gather for, uh, for a young teenager to gather around uh, ice coffee in Greece is around ice Nescafe. And this is this is uh, 20 or 30 years old that, that this has been taking place. And we are going to continue to, to push this culture around the world. So this is uh, important. We want to be part of that. This RTD opportunity uh, uh, will be there. We are also innovating there. And again, here with technology, you maybe tested the, the Shakeissimo. This is a product that is very indulgent. Uh, and that's a technology that uh, we have developed, a patented technology as well, that fits also this uh, desire to have not only a coffee, but an indulgent uh, product that you sit with for a while, chatting with your friends or, or going on, uh, on the internet. So there we go that beyond on, on innovation, and I show you here some, some prototype of things we, we have done and, and will be testing, and this is also linked to ability. Uh, to, to bring system and to bring uh, other uh, the experience around uh, a coffee cup. Um, well, this is very, very much linked with innovation leadership. This is very much linked all what you have seen of, of uh, this brand acting and talking with authority around the world is linked also to what we say we have product and new technology that allow us constantly, constantly to upgrade our product and make it relevant to the consumer of today. This is a story of 77 years, and, and uh, the red line is the growth line. And this is what Nescafe brand, which so, so many people have said over time, you know, soluble coffee uh, will be replaced by trust and ground. No, no, it has not been the case. And why, and you will see more of that, because we have upgraded the, the, the experience, uh, making it more modern, making it more interesting, making it more surprising and continuously bring to this brand vibrancy that uh, a young generation want and, and carry with them uh, uh, throughout their, their life. So a few innovation, and I will go quite fast on that. This is the mainstream product that we uh, uh, relaunched <coughs> sorry, uh, the last 18 months. Uh, this is what Stefan showed this morning with uh, uh, membrane technology. This is also one thing that we do uh, very well with a lot of agility. A coffee made for a very, very local culture of coffee. Uh, this is Café Viet, and you know maybe that in Vietnam they drink coffee, but they add a bit of fish sauce in it to give it a very specific taste. Uh, uh, we, are, we are there. We are there with a product that uh, fits their need. The other one is Café Nescafé Arabiana. This is a cafe, uh, coffee that is made in the Arab world with uh, cardamom with a cardamom. So we are able to, to do that, and this is also with this big mega brand to have uh, the agility to offer variants that really fits uh, some part of uh, our consumer expectation. We are premiumizing the mixes. The mixes were seen uh, 20 years ago as the start of coffee. I'll give you coffee, sugar, and creamers. You just drop it in a cup. You have a safe cup of coffee. Today, 
in a lot of markets, notably in Asia, uh, this is coffee, this is coffee, and we need to upgrade this. So we are upgrading the blend, we are upgrading the delivery. For those of you who tested, we are upgrading the form of the cappuccino, the quality, the density of that form to offer a far better experience to this middle class that has grown up with Nescafe and we want to keep on Nescafe with product like this. We are also developing super premium product with a technology that, that uh, the split uh, with yield splitting uh, uh, technology and if you want detail you will ask uh, uh, Stefan but this is the best we can do today with soluble coffee and I will show you some, uh, some result after. This is behind this a lot of technology, a lot of patented technology, a lot of the competitive gap we create is through technology. And you see here at the bottom the, what, what I showed this morning, the verticality of our technology R&D. This is what our coffee people, about 450 of them, do every day, make us win in coffee. We have four product technology center. We have also, which is unique in the world, a system technology center. People who work on system, the interface between machine, a capsule or, or whatever, and a cup of coffee. And this, of course, I think today is, is unique in the world. All of this is irrelevant to our consumer. What, what is important to our consumer is this. This is a worldwide score on this famous 60-40, that in 75% of the case, we win a clear 60-40. 60, 60 people out of 100 clearly prefer our product on the blind test, and the rest we have to work on. The other two examples are striking example of Nescafe, the best Nescafe we have today, uh, prepared with the machine, the barista machine that you show, uh, uh, probably this uh, machine developed for Japan, beating the best Italian coffee brand, Roston Ground coffee brand. The last one is in Japan, Nescafe, <laughs> uh, uh, you will hear about this probably tomorrow, beating the best coffee shop brand on the blind test. So soluble coffee, with the technology we have extracted uh, at the right temperature and well done, is a product that can absolutely compare with best roast and ground coffee. And we'll continue to develop this to keep our lead in this. I want to talk now about portion coffee. This is a big part. This is the other two second segment where Nestle is not present, but he's a pioneer. Uh, and, and continue to lead. And I put that chart up, maybe not to see the last few years, but maybe to see the first 15 years. Uh, because pe people, when they talk about Nespresso, they see, oh, this extraordinary success of, of the last 10 years of Nescafe Dolce Gusto, but, but look at the beginning. And some of the product, when we talk innovation this morning, are in that phase where we are leading trying to lead through a side, bringing our technology and trying to change habit to bring new quality to, to consumer via year in, year out uh, uh, improvement of what we do. And you saw some example of what we, we are doing. That's our strength. It's not only a story of technology, of great coffee. It's also a story of passions, patience and, and, and stamina to develop this. Today, this is what we do. We said, uh, Francois this morning showed uh, very humbly that we are the number two portion coffee company, which is, which is true. Today, the Jab company with Keurig, Senseo, and Tassimo, three system, is ahead of us if you look at it from a corporate level. If you look at it from a consumer choice point of view, if you look at it from what brand they drink, you have a different picture. This is because Jab, Jab and especially Keurig, but also Senseo, a system which have a lot of brands uh, having access to their system. The Keurig system has about 65 brands in the, in the US. So it's not that you may have a Keurig machine, but you are going to drink another brand. So if you look today in the world, uh, reconstructing the, the market share, because a lot of, of course, Nespresso share are not visible to, uh, to Nielsen, this is what you, we have. Nespresso is still and by far the largest selling uh, coffee system in the world. And Nescafe Dolce Gusto today is, is the third one if you accept that you have a lot of private label via Senseo also. 
Let me talk about Nescafe Dolce Gusto because I'm still on the Nescafe brand and Nescafe Dolce Gusto in some market today is as important as our soluble coffee business. And in 10 years, it will be a big driver of this brand equity and choice for consumer. More than 1 billion sales achieved since launch, 82 market, more penetrated in fact than Nespresso. Number one, Europe, Latam, Asia <coughs> in retail machine capsule. Of course, we are not in, in North America with, uh, with Nescafe Dolce Gusto. And this famous new factory in Brazil that support a very high ambition. If you recall, I show you four key markets in coffee for the future. Number two is Brazil. Brazil is a rust and ground market, which we believe and have seen for the last 10 years that we can convert to portion coffee. And this is done by Nespresso but now very, very strongly with Nescafe Dolce Gusto because we have an industrial presence and that will allow us to accelerate massively what we can do in the second largest coffee market in the world. This is the story of, of the launch of Nescafe Dolce Gusto, launched in 2007. These are machine sales in, in Europe and today, today we are the leader in, in, uh, in Europe against the other system in retail. This is due to what? This is due to a very specific uh, uh, image of the unconventional coffee of a system that has designed that is a, a, a bit different, different from all other systems that are less mainstream, that is more breakthrough in, uh, in design, in what we do, but, but also in product with quite a lot of product which are indulgent, which are fresh, which are different, which other brands cannot do with a lot of dairy content in, in our product. This is two and these are two limited edition that we launched, which again we looked for uh, origin that were unconventional, were not the typical uh, uh, coffee origin you have in the world. This is a, a system that is targeted to a younger uh, uh, group than, than, than Nespresso and is trying really to differentiate itself and you will see in the coming months a completely new communication that is very, very much uh, uh, targeted to the newcomer to coffee who wants to, to enjoy great individualized cap uh, in, in their home. Um, that's Nescafe. To complement this, of course, we have Nespresso. Uh, Nespresso is, remain, will be an absolutely unique brand, probably a unique story in the uh, in, uh, coffee uh, uh, world. A uh, unique brand, a unique business model in which a company decides to take care of the full experience of this cup from the moment a bean is picked up in the field and before because we provide assistance all the way to the moment the capsule is disposed and recycled uh, somewhere in the world. A unique business model that, that bypasses the traditional way of selling coffee but you know all these stories. Today we have 400 boutiques in the world and we'll talk about development. About 10,000 employees, out of which 80% are facing consumer. They are in boutique, they are our people. They are people that are here to, to delight our consumer every day. And we want to continue this story the, the way it is. What is it based on? It's based on creative, constantly competitive gaps. And three big areas. <coughs> How we innovate and premiumize on coffee, and machine, and I will show you that. How we continue to expand geographically, and we have more markets to conquer, not only market, but also channel. And how we continue to cultivate this absolutely unique relationship we have with our club members, people who are affiliated to the Nespresso Club, and how we continue and intensify the way we talk and, and live with them. Rare coffee origin, this is what we have done, and I show you here also the premiumization that we're able to achieve in a market and in a, in a system which, as you know, has been open. That is, now you have competition. We have about 200 uh, compatible capsules, or so-called compatible capsule, to Nespresso. But in spite of this, through this ability to find origin, to, to market them well, to bring them to our, our club member and excite them, we are able, not only that they continue to buy the product that they like every day, but also premiumize. And you see here some of the price point of what we have achieved. I want to, to come here to, to uh, one uh, example that we are quite proud of, of uh, what we achieved in Sudan. Uh, as you may know, 85% of Nespresso 
beans are bought through a program called e-collaboration in which we uh, have a contract with farmers to buy their beans with a premium to this because we need a certain quality. Only 2% of the world production of coffee fits Nespresso standard of quality for the beans. So we contract these farmers. A lot of work was done in Latin America until three years ago. Three years ago, we decided to go to, to Africa and to do the same work in, in, uh, in Ethiopia, uh, in Kenya, in Tanzania, and, and we went to South Sudan. And South Sudan was still almost at war. But as you know, we have a, a, a brand ambassador, more than ambassador today, called George Clooney, who has a, 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 a clear view on what uh, we could be doing in Sudan. So we launched and very proudly for the first time a coffee from South Sudan last year. We sold everything within three hours at a very big premium uh, because it's a story beyond the, the just another variety of coffee. So I'll show you the social media communication. In the middle of December, the war started. We left because it was not easy. This is not an ordinary story about coffee. This is a story set in a country divided by conflict. A country that has so much potential, but continues to be blighted by war. But a story of positive impacts. This is South Sudan. Rich in culture, beauty, and land, it's hard to believe just how much the people have suffered over the last 40 years. But this isn't a country that was always struggling. This is a region with a long and rich history in producing high quality coffee. The ongoing investments being made here are directed towards setting up a sustainable infrastructure for the first time in more than 30 years. It creates wealth in agriculture and offers a stable livelihood to thousands of farmers and their families. The Sopresso, they help the farmers improve their quality and this coffee quality will uh, help them to earn a better price. It's not the only solution, but sustainable coffee development can contribute to a diversified economy, which in turn sets in motion a positive momentum, encouraging a long-term positive impact. We are joyful that our country is being, is being lifted up. No, this is not an ordinary story about coffee. This is breathing new life into an industry that was thought to be lost entirely. Together we can ensure every cup of coffee has a positive effect on the world. So uh, we, we, we had only a, a few thousand tons. We will be able this year with, with production going up. And I can tell you people who are there do extraordinary extraordinary work to, to preserve this production from all what's going around. We'll be able to release this uh, right to, to more country, but this is a, uh, the way Nespresso wants to position itself, a brand that is a, a touch of everyday luxury in a cup of coffee, but also a brand that, that marries this luxury also with extraordinary responsibility in what it does along the whole value chain. And I think this is quite an example. Uh, we will continue. I talk about coffee. Machine is an important part of why people choose us. The interface with machine, the design of a machine, the functionality of machine. I show you saw this example on the sixth row, the Prodigio, which is a new one, the connected machine. Uh, the one on the right I will talk a bit later on when I talk about food service. This is our food service machine for, for multiple usage, which has, sorry, which has been doing uh, uh, very, very well. Second leg. Uh, uh, conquering new territories and new territories. I show you here a map of, of still what is to be conquered. And you see where we are today in the, since 2011. The market we are entering, we still have a lot to do. We still have a lot of places where we can put a boutique. And believe me, a boutique in, in Accra or a boutique in, uh, in Lagos works. 
we can conquer this place. You have everywhere in the cities of the world uh, people who want to have great coffee. And if they don't get Nespresso today, they bring it with them from the airport. This is why we open boutiques also in, in some airports uh, going to Africa, notably uh, in France. So this is a big part of our geographical expansion. Very important part, and I come back to the beginning of the presentation, is the US, is the US, because uh, Nestle has been, and you know that this is a frustration week in the, in the US on coffee. We have never really, really break that market along a whole history. Well, this might be changing, or at least this is what we want to do. At least this is our ambition. And this ambition is not only to talk. This ambition materialized with a, a, the decision to design a system that had all the, the quality of Nespresso, but corresponded to the cup that the American consumer wanted. And that's why we launched a virtual line. I will talk about that uh, in the next slide. Also a campaign, also with George Clooney as the, uh, the ambassador, and a retail expansion. So let me cover these three things. Uh, virtual line, and some of you may have tested uh, uh, this, was developed over several years to bring to the US the best black, long black cap Nespresso could do without technology. And in fact, we developed a new technology for it. We have launched this a year ago with very good result. I will talk about that. This is quite, quite a breakthrough in, in quality. Of course, we have 6040. We would have not launched otherwise. We have versatility in the system, which other machine curries mostly uh, uh, do not have to that extent. And we have, and we hope we have a design, or at least the consumer told us, a design and, and the way we, we market this, the convenience, and of course the club membership. That creates in the US a very, very uh, important market, but also a very competitive market, a unique positioning for, for us in, uh, in that market. So we, we launched uh, Virtuo Line in a year ago now, uh, and we started a year ago, two years ago, 18 months ago, sorry. Uh, and I want to show you here a piece of, of communication uh, that were put in market. These are different. This is to convince Americans to upgrade to, to a new coffee level. And as you have seen, this coffee has quite a lot of crema on top. And this for the American is, is new. So we'll have to work at this to, to explain, like we did 20 years ago, that this crema on top of a coffee is a symbol of quality and helps to retain the flavor in, in the coffee. I show you two pieces of communication, mainstream first with Clooney, and we enrolled Danny DeVito in, in a advertising where he, he, Danny DeVito wants to upgrade his coffee. Link to that third, expansion of our retail footprint in, in the US. You see the number of new boutiques. Uh, we are going to open a large part of this is going to be in, in North America, where the biggest opportunity is for us today. So where, where, where are we today after this? We, uh, you, you see the, the growth here, about 33% Kagar. So we, we are, I think, on, on our way. Of course, if you look at system today, it's, it's Keurig uh, versus Nespresso, roughly, basically. This is, and it looked like a, an overwhelming uh, Keurig uh, domination, and it is. Uh, when, you, when you start looking at what is drunk in Keurig, in brand choice by consumer, uh, uh, you start to have a different, uh, different uh, uh, figures of where Nespresso stands. Uh, and we are, we are uh, uh, pleased with, with this result. Uh, basically, the, between the, the ranking, the fifth ranking and, and the third ranking, there is not a lot. So uh, uh, we, we are on the way, we are encouraged, we are going to continue in the US to improve, to launch new varieties of coffee. Uh, uh, really made for, for American consumer to launch new machine, improve machine. You saw one that we launched two months ago, but we will continue it the same way within the rest of the world to bring year after year better experience with, uh, with Nespresso. Uh, and, and hopefully this will be our, our main uh, uh, endeavor in the US as a Nestle coffee uh, uh, company to, to bring consumers to our brands uh, in, in the US. Um, the, the last part of when I'll talk about uh, geographical expansion, so channel expansion, 
I talk about this machine that you see here in the middle of the Aguila, which is a beautiful machine uh, that on, not only delivers uh, uh, coffee, the Nespresso, uh, the Nespresso quality, but also allows for a lot of uh, moduling of, of the, the foam you want, of the, the dairy part that uh, you want, and the intensity of the foam of your cappuccino, latte, so very versatile machine that has been very, very well received uh, by, by the trade, and notably the upper end uh, today of, of, the, the, of the restaurants. And you see here 750 top shop. We today, in your one third of Michelin star restaurants serve Nespresso today. So we'll continue to do that. We'll do this also by personalizing blend and doing things that only Nespresso, we believe, can do to that at that scale. Uh, unique customer experience, I'll go quickly. We continuously work at making our boutique interesting, relevant, easy to shop, fast through if you want, having new coffee experience if you want, and this is a constant work. We do second, improving the digital experience, mobile, to today more than 30% of orders Nespresso are made on mobile. We have, like everybody, we are working at making this easier and easier and faster to be able to order an espresso and get it delivered the way you want, the hours you want to be able to give you capsule for recycling, which is an important part of what we believe the brand stands for also, that we are fully responsible up to the recycling of, uh, of our capsule and building this unique relationship with our consumer.